Let's get this place a rockin'. <laughs> well, I choose to feel good about my life today. Look beyond appearances, I painted my way. Connect deep down with the spirit inside. Rejuvenate with energy and let God guide. Shine my light to inspire, be a real life. Why? Now that's all right with me. I got love in my heart. I got love. I got a whole lot of soul. I got joy in my life. From my head down to my toes. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. Well, I'm going to do random acts of kindness out there. Surprise them with a thank you to show them I care. With a big gold smile that's upon my face. A bounce in my step to a positive pace. Standing high with some poise, make a big joyful noise. And that's all right with me. I got love in my heart, I got love, I got a whole lot of soul, I got joy in my life, from my head down to my toes, I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me, I got love in my heart, I got love in my heart, I got a whole lot of soul. I got joy in my life, from my head down to my toes. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. I got my light. I got my light shining bright, and that's all right with me. Thank you, thank you, Brent and Patty. That is a song to wake us up and get us going, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. So we uh, wel welcome you to Unity of Hagerstown. And for those brave souls who came out in this cold, cold weather, I, I applaud you, I honor you, and I appreciate you for being here. For those watching in the comfort of your home, I hope you stay warm and safe today and as the storm approaches. In honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, which is happening tomorrow, the celebration, I have a quote from him. As my sufferings mounted, I soon realized that there were two ways in which I could respond to my situation, either to react with bitterness or seek to transform the suffering into a creative force. I decided to follow that latter course. Today, we will look at ways in which we can make that choice as well. Let's begin, though, with our opening prayer. Oh, just taking a moment to relax, to center, to release all the uh, busyness that may be happening, the to-do list, the worries of the storm, or any other concerns of the heart, so that we become fully present here and now. Open hearts, open to God as wisdom, as love, as life, as joy, as peace flowing through us. We allow this Spirit of God to lead us today to our highest and best good. We give thanks for this opportunity to come together, to connect, to sing, to pray, to laugh. And so it is. Amen. And now if you'll join me in our mission statement, together, Unity of Hagerstown, a welcoming community, embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation, creating a positive path for abundant living. And now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word with Arnie Krauss. Morning, everyone. The word for today is rise. 
So throughout time, there have been people who led lives that changed the world forever. And their words and deeds provided hope and inspiration for those who would carry forth their legacies of love, growth, evolution, long after this life has passed. <clears throat> their most powerful contribution, however, was their ability to inspire others, to express their own divine purpose. As more and more people reach their highest potential, the whole of humanity ascends. Today, I honor those who have led lives of service, striving for love, truth, and justice. I take steps not just to commemorate their journeys and contributions, but to embark upon my own. I rise grateful to contribute all I can to the growth and evolution of humankind. Take action from Ezra 10 and 4. Take action for it is truly, or for it is your duty, and we are with you. Be strong and do it. And let's reflect on the message on the board. I rise, rise in, in consciousness, consciousness to help to create, create a, a world, world that, that works, works for, for all. all. Just take a moment, think on it, embrace it, and we'll say it one more time for you. One more time. I rise, I rise in, consciousness in consciousness to help create a world that, that works, works for, for all. all. Thank you. Th thank you, Arnie. And now we have another song with Brent and Patty. Open the eyes of my heart. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to see love. I want to feel love. I open the eyes of my heart. I open. I want to know joy. 
I want to be joy, peace. I want to know peace. I want to be peace. I open. I open the eyes of my heart. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to see love. I want to feel love. I open the eyes of my heart. I open the eyes of my heart. I want to know love. I want to be love. I want to know love. I want to be loved. Thank you, Brent and Patty, for a beautiful song. <laughs> I couldn't find my classes. I started freaking out. <laughs> I was like, where are they? <laughs> um, thankfully, the song covered me for that one. Anyway, <clears throat> so Rachel Naomi Raymond, who you may have heard or read some of her books, is a physician who uses art and meditation and other spiritual practices in the healing of cancer patients. She told Jack Cornfield, who, whose name may be familiar as well, a story about a young man who had um, come to her for healing. It really illustrates the process of healing our hearts, which accompanies the healing of the body. She described this man who is 24 years old um, having had one of his legs amputated at the hip in order to save his life from bone cancer. And when she began her work with him, he was um, resentful, full of resentment. He had a great sense of injustice and really um, kind of a hatred for all healthy people. It just seemed unfair to him that he should undergo this loss at such an early uh, time in his life. And his grief and his rage were so great that it took several years of continuous work with him for him to be come out of this anger and to really heal his emotions, heal his wounded spirit, heal, heal his broken heart. Dr. Raymond encouraged and supported him in telling his story through painting, through other art, and to bring his entire life into awareness. And as he slowly healed, he developed a profound compassion for others in similar situations. And he began visiting people in the hospital who had also suffered severe losses, physical losses, on one occasion, he told her that he had visited a young singer who had lost the, both of her breasts, and she was so depressed that she wouldn't even look at him, much less talk to him. The nurses had the radio playing, probably hoping to cheer her up. And it was a hot day, and the young man had come in to visit in running shorts. Finally, desperate to get her attention, he unstrapped his artificial leg and began dancing around the room, snapping his fingers to the music. She looked at him in amazement and then began to laugh. She just burst out laughing and said, man, if you can dance, I can sing. When this young man first began working with drawing, he made a crayon sketch of his body in the form of a vase with a deep crack a deep black crack running through it that he, he just redrew the crack over and over again, grinding his teeth with rage. Several years later, when Dr. Raymond showed him uh, some of his early pictures to complete his healing process, he saw that vase and he said, oh, that, one, that one's not finished yet. And she suggested that he finish it right there and then, and he did. He ran his finger along the crack and said, you see, this is where the light gets in. With a yellow crown, he drew the light streaming through the crack into the body of the vase and said, our hearts grow strong through the broken places. 
Now this is very similar, of course, probably taken directly from the Japanese art of kintsugi, uh, which is the same principle. A, broke, a, a cracked or a broken bowl is put back together with gold to symbolize the light that gets in through the crack. Our human journey is full of experiences that may overwhelm us, that are painful physically, mentally, emotionally, even spiritually at times. And when this pain is intolerable, we may cope by shutting down. We shut down our hearts emotionally. Ironically, though, when we do so, the pain that we're hoping not to feel, the bitterness, the anger, the loneliness, the hopelessness, becomes our constant companion. The young man featured in this story shows that through courage, vulnerability, and the desire to heal, the wounds that shrouded his human heart revealed an opening, unifying him and harmonizing him to the universal heart, to divine love. He moved from pity and victimhood and bitterness to be in the presence of hope and inspiration and compassion. Today, we look at hearts opening in continuing our series the Soul Awakening Practice by James O.D. When, our, when we close our heart emotionally, physical symptoms may occur as well because we are one interconnected being, right? Mind, body, spirit. Our heart, our physical heart may give us problems. Our lungs may give us problems. So our circulatory system may give us problems. We may also feel it in our shoulders, in our ribs, in our diaphragm. This closing of the heart, though, also affects others. It affects others in our lives. We may become more rigid, rigid and inflexible around others. We may become more judgmental or critical, controlling or demanding, intolerant. We may withdraw completely from others, feeling aloof, isolated, and self-centered. We have difficulties when we shut our heart with emotions, as you can imagine, not only with grief and resentment and bitterness, but also with compassion, feeling compassion. There may be unresolved wounds of betrayal, loss, hardships, abuse, neglect, trauma, unmet needs, and we may be holding on to limiting beliefs, self-limiting beliefs of being unlovable, being unworthy, not being able to trust ourselves or trust others as well, thinking that life is a constant struggle, that we're a failure, that we're not enough. The good news, my friends, is that we can heal, we can open our hearts again. We can do this through appreciation and gratitude, through kindness and compassion, and also through awareness of what we are feeling. That is really where it begins. We heal the wound when we tell our story, feel our feelings, and begin that forgiveness process for ourselves and others. Oscar Wilde wrote that hearts are meant to be broken as we heal through some of the spiritual practices that Raymond uses or art, things come up, unresolved issues come up, and our hearts may break open fully to feel once more. Those deep unspoken parts within us arise, and our task is to allow them, to let them move through us and then to recognize, acknowledge them, and hear the song that they sing. Wendell Berry, most amazing poet, illustrates this beautifully. I go among trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight, 
what I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. What we find as we listen to the song of our rage or fear or loneliness is that these songs do not stay with us forever as we acknowledge them. Rage can turn into sorrow that turns into tears, and tears may fall for what seems like forever, but eventually the sun does come out. A memory of an old loss may sing to us, and our body may actually relive that moment of loss. But then the armoring around that loss begins to soften. And in the midst of the song of tremendous grieving, the pain finally finds reliefs. In listening to our most painful songs, we learn the divine art of forgiveness. Now, there's a whole practice of forgiveness that can be cultivated. And I will say that both forgiveness and compassion arise spontaneously when we begin that heart opening. Somehow, when we feel our own pain and sorrow, our own ocean of tears, we come to know that ours is a shared pain and that the mystery and the beauty and the pain of life cannot be separated. This universal pain is also part of our connection to the human family with one another. And in the face of this, acknowledging this pain that everyone has felt at some point in life, it is very difficult to withhold compassion. Anne Lamott tells us the heart that breaks open can contain the whole universe. The heart that breaks open can contain the whole universe. Our hearts are bigger than our bodies. Not the physical heart, but that emotional heart that can hold so much. James O.D. tells us the heart is a window to the awakening soul. In fact, it is the only means of experiencing this cosmic event unfolding within your being. But you must learn many exquisitely difficult spiritual lessons on how to open your heart wide enough for the light of your soul to fully enter in. When our hearts open, we feel this connection to all creation. We feel the universe pulsing with unbounded compassion, as O.D. states. We feel the reverence for everyone's journey. This is when we know that we have connected with that universal heart, that cosmic love. This is when we also begin to cultivate a certain spaciousness in the heart as it continues to expand, leaving no one out. Without this spaciousness, our hearts remain tight and our lives remain self-centered. When the heart opens, we no longer suppress the emotions. And it is then that we realize that the open heart heals as it has the capacity to listen deeply, dissolving fear and resentment. The Dalai Lama tells us when we close our heart we cannot be joyful. When we have the courage to live with an open heart, we are able to feel our pain and the pain of others, but we are also able to experience more joy. By keeping our heart open, we feel the subtle current of grace that uplifts and invites us to this ever-expanding experience. It is a conscious act, keeping the heart open. And it is one that heals the self and helps heal others as it connects us to that universal heart. And it is the transformational agent of our world. Adi tells us your heart has the power to share the substance of unconditional love with everyone. Let me just repeat that. Your heart has the power to share the substance of unconditional love with everyone, despite hostility, insult, and rejection. Your heart can rise above that. Devoid of narcissism, it is an agent of both personal and social transformation. You want to change the world? Open your heart. 
open your heart and let that love that resides there touch everyone you see, everyone you hear, everyone you meet. No matter how angry or resentful they may be with you, no matter how insulting they may be, that does not matter. Let that love flow. And soon you will be seeing them in a different light. You will see them as the expression of God that they are and not all the personality that might be shining through. It is a conscious act to open the heart and it begins with a choice. Today, if you're feeling led to, I invite you to choose it with me in this affirmation. Today I choose to keep my heart open. And again, today I choose to keep my heart open. Part of awakening the heart is awakening the body because the heart is not just emotional. We have a physical heart as well. It's found in the body. It's not found in the head. So bodily prayer or breathing meditations all assist us in opening up the heart. Matthew Fox tells us that. So we're going to move into meditation, but I'm going to invite you to do Pranayama, which is a Hindu uh, form of controlled breathing, alternating nostrils. So with your left hand, we're going to walk through it. With your left hand, you would put your thumb and close your left nostril. And I know it might be a little difficult with the mask on, but I think we can do it. And you breathe in with your right nostril, and then with your ring finger, you would close your right no nostril. <laughs> I better not close it while I'm talking. Close your right nostril. Close your right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. And then you wait a moment and breathe in through the left. Close that and exhale through the right. So you're alternating between the thumb and the ring finger of your left hand, closing the nostrils. So go ahead and do that to your own pace for five times. And as we complete that cycle, I invite you to keep your eyes closed or close them if you didn't close them during the breathing. And picture yourself in your home, or maybe the home of your, your desires. And someone knocks at the door, rings the doorbell, you go to open it, and it is a friend or family member whom you just love to pieces. You open the door and you welcome them in. You're so happy to see them. Your heart just lights up. You invite them to come in and sit down and you begin to talk and, and you, you can be free to be exactly who you are with this beloved. You're, you hold, have a candid conversation you're both vulnerable and open-hearted, and you're secure in your relationship, knowing that this openness brings you even closer. <laughs> After a bit, your loved one leaves, and you decide to go for a walk. You walk down the, the sidewalk, and you notice it's a beautiful day. 
there's a lightness in your step. Everyone you see, your heart opens and just recognizes the beauty of spirit within them. They may walk right on by, it doesn't matter. You just keep walking and keep loving everyone you see. Feel the energy in your heart space. Feel the spaciousness there as it begins to take in your world. as we continue with this meditation. We know that whatever opportunities or challenges may come to us, we can either resist them or we can open ourselves to grow from these experiences. We know that the way becomes clear when we simply trust that spirit of wisdom within to move us forward. So as we go into a period of silence, I invite you to just simply affirm your openness, your openness in heart, in mind, in life to the activity and direction of spirit in the silence, in the silence, in the silence. I am open to the activity and direction of spirit within. Today I choose to open my heart fully, expressing the love that I am. And as we sit restfully, 
I invite Brent and Patty to share a song. Well, the storm on the ocean is the rain downtown. The sun shines somewhere when the night comes down. The moon's still dancing when the skies turn blue. And the love I'm feeling is the love in you. One heart, one mind, one love is with us all the time. One life, one light, one spirit in the world tonight. You know the clouds weigh heavy in the summer air. The wind shakes autumn till the leaves are bare. The snow in December warms the warm blue sea. And the love I'm feeling is the love in me. One heart, one mind, one love is with us all the time. One life, one light, one spirit in the world tonight. Find a way, make our peace. Except on faith things we cannot see Carry on, see this through One for all, all for me and you Now the song I'm singing goes a long way back It's love's own engine running down this track the light in the tunnel is coming into view. Says the hope I'm feeling is the hope in you. One heart, one mind, one love is with us all the time. One life, one light, one spirit in the world tonight. One heart, one mind, one love is with us all the time. One life, one light, one spirit in the world tonight. Oh, how perfect is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's join together in prayer, shall we, with our offertory prayer? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank, Thank you, you, Father, Mother God, for the abundance in my life. Um, you know, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube later on this week when it's posted, and you'd like to support this ministry, first of all, thank you. Um, and secondly, you can do it simply by go, going to unityhagerstown.org, and there is a donate button there. We try to make it convenient for you. Um, or you can go to Zell and just look up unityhagerstown at live.com. And again, all donations are greatly appreciated. And if you're watching on Facebook, and I forgot to say this, Please check in with each other. Say hello, put down any prayer requests, or what you're grateful for. How about that? <laughs> okay. So we do have a, we have another song. We do have another song. <laughs> you're welcome to stand. Well, I'm grateful for the love that you rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the love, for the love. Let's sing that again. Well, I'm grateful for the love that you rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the love the love and the blessings well I'm grateful for the 
blessings that you rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the blessings, for the blessings and the bounty. Well, I'm grateful for the bounty that you rain down all day. I'm grateful for the bounty, for the bounty and the beauty. I'm grateful for the beauty that you rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the beauty, for the beauty. Now we're going to just get a little crazy right here. You ready? Here we go. We're just going to sing I'm grateful. Well, I'm grateful, grateful. that again, but this time we're going to say for the blessings. I'm getting all crazy on us today. Here we go. Take a nice full breath. Well, I'm grateful, 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 so grateful, grateful, grateful for the blessings, for the blessings. Let's go back to love. Well, I'm grateful for the love that you Rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the love, for the love and the bounty. Well, I'm grateful for the bounty that you rain down all day. Well, I'm grateful for the bounty, for the bounty and the beauty. Well, I'm grateful. For the beauty that you rain down all day, I'm grateful for the beauty, for the beauty and the blessings, and the blessings and the bounty. Yes, the bounty, all the love, all the love. Yes, the love. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Great music. <clears throat> so we do have a few announcements. Uh, the Soul Awakening Practice meeting on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. via Zoom. We had a lovely discussion last Tuesday. This week we'll be talking about hearts opening. What does that feel like for you? What does that mean for you? And looking at a few quotes as well, exploring that. And if you cannot make the 7 p.m. at Zoom, then it, certainly uh, I'm trying something new, and I'm thinking it's going to take off. I know it's going to take off with your participation, right? Uh, it's the Unity of Hagerstown book discussion page or group on Facebook. I'll post a couple questions, put your answer there, and comment on the other posts. We'll get a discussion going virtually, okay? And then... What else do we have going? Oh, yeah, if you're interested in volunteering, we do have some positions open. Um, greeter, greeter of the Daily Word, someone who makes those lovely little gift packets for first-time visitors. That wouldn't require um, but maybe once a month making them, making them up. And uh, we also have uh, Adopt the Highway um, position, leadership position open as well. So if any of those... Holly, Holly Place, Holly Place, that's right, preparing meals for Holly Place. I, I always think of you as such a great team, but there's always room in the table. Yeah, always room there. Okay, and then I have um, a great honor in introducing Safi, if you don't know. She's going to make our next announcement. Let me get you a, a mic, maybe, yeah. Good morning. Um, so I am pleased to announce, I will come over here, uh, that Sandy and I have discussed, and I'm going to be taking over, well, I guess not taking over, but starting something new, a uh, new offering with Unity, which is going to be Wheel of the Year services. So I don't know if everyone here is familiar with that, probably not, but 
uh, equinoxes, solstices, and cross-border days. So I will be hosting various um, circle rituals. The first one's going to be here in Parish Hall. Um, that will be Saturday, February 5th at 6 p.m. If you want to bring your own unscented candle to that, you're more than welcome to, um, but I will provide tea lights for everyone during that circle um, and other supplies. But um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me. So this will be again the first of a series of eight this year. Um, so the last one will be the winter solstice. So you can kind of expect one every month and a half to two months or so. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So this one is in bulk. Um, some people may have heard of candle moss. Um, that's the more common like Christian Catholic version of that holiday. Um, this one we will be honoring what we are paving the way for or lighting in our lives. Uh, we'll be doing some, some candle prayer uh, and creating Brigid's crosses at this one. Um, so it'll be kind of like a little sermon or service and then a little bit of ritual um, and then some time to share together. So I hope that you will uh, join us for that. Thank you, Safi. That sounds wonderful. I, I'm so happy that you decided to, to bring that to Unity of Hagerstown. Um, and now we will say goodbye to our Facebook friends. Thank you for joining us for this portion. And again, if you're comfortable in writing down a prayer request, please do so. We will certainly keep those prayer requests um, in our hearts for the next uh, few weeks. So.